Very well, I renounce. Yes, but still, it moves. Galileo, who had just been condemned by the Court of the Inquisition, was talking about the Earth. That's right. For you see, children, up to that time, for centuries, everybody believed the Earth was the center of the universe. No doubt about it. Yes, they thought the sun and all the planets revolved around the Earth and had always done so, and God help anybody who didn't agree. Yeah, that'd be going against the teaching of the church, and you'd be putting your life in danger. Today, we know that old idea was all wrong. But it took a great deal of courage to come out and challenge the authorities, and it took a long time for people to understand that what's at the center of our solar system is the sun, right? In 1564, in the Italian city of Pisa, was born the man who would stand up and say it. The Earth goes around the sun, and his name was Galileo Galilei. Come on, Galileo, let's have a race. To the tower! Are you ready? Yeah. Ready? ready? Away we go! Yeah! Why is it you always win? Too much spaghetti and chocolate cake. <laughs> Anyway, if we jumped, I'd be the winner then. I'd land first. What makes you think so? It's obvious. I'm fat. I mean heavier. I'm not so sure. Have to check it out. Only one way we jump. <laughs> A few years later, Galileo at 14 was admitted to the University of Pisa and to begin his medical studies. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to admit he's always good for a laugh. We have to go. Come on, wake up. You go on, I'll catch up. I've got the answer. <laughs> Might I suggest you watch where you're going? Uh, I'm sorry, I really am. I was thinking, guess I wasn't looking. Oh, well, no bones broken. It is true, concentration can blur the realities of this world. It's that swinging lamp. It's really a pendulum. Don't you see? Swinging back and forth, it's measuring time. Time is eternal. But you can still measure it. I'll explain. I haven't time. Hmm. It's really simple. The shorter the pendulum, the faster the frequency. An arc of a circle, or even better, a parabola. The light breaks the glass, strong stuff, my poor stomach. With this pendulum, we can measure very accurately the exact pulse rate. That will be helpful in determining the state of a patient's health. And just who do you think you are to teach us anything about medicine? My name is Galileo. Galileo Galilei. Well, Galileo Galilei, I suggest you return to class where you've completed your studies perhaps then Just a can... moment. Permit me, uh, dear colleague. This apparatus appears interesting, don't you think? Look. It's swinging precisely at my pulse rate. Let's check yours. Mm -hmm. Aha! <laughs> Your pulse is more rapid, old friend. You have humors that are galloping away. Ah, you only to look. It will slow down with time. It depends on the swing. It's a useless toy. No, sir, not at all. You see, it's not the length of the swing. The length of the pendulum determines how fast it swings. Now. Ah. Mm hmm. Rapid, much too rapid. It's a bad sign. A little bloodletting would do you some good. Meh. Meh. 
Young man, your invention will be very useful to us. You are quite right. You can measure time with it. Galileo went on to use his invention in making clocks. But this is the only one in a long line of discoveries that he made. the farther it sinks down. So, what is dense sinks quicker. In this way, we can test whether a liquid is more dense than water. At the age of 25, Galileo is appointed professor of mathematics. <sighs> All set. You remember Galileo when we were kids? We used to joke about jumping. This time you'll see you're wrong as can be. My big rock will fall faster than your little stone. And I say they'll hit the water at the same time. Hmm. Are you ready? I'll count to three, and together we drop them. We'll only hear one splash when they hit the water. <laughs> <laughs> See that? These bells are all placed at an equal distance, only they jingle faster as the ball goes down. We can measure acceleration in time. What do you measure it with this time? With my pendulum. How else? It's a dumb game. Doesn't mean anything. Can I try one? Go ahead. Here, the ball. Oop. Galileo's just made another discovery. The speed of a falling body increases by the square of the time it falls. For the first time, here is a basic law of physics. And then he goes on to work out the thermometer, measuring heat in gases and liquids. And he invented the proportional compass, useful in measuring distant objects as well as the distance of an object from the observer. Oh, his fame as a scholar spreads. Many people come to attend his classes, and then at the age of 28, he was made professor of mathematics at the famous University of Padua. Here is your domain, Professor Galileo. And I'm sure you're going to make a great many more amazing discoveries. Galileo was to remain at the University of Padua 20 years, and he did make discoveries. Naturally, he had to fight dogma and preconceived notions, as always. Do you realize some so-called learned men argue that the Earth is not the center of the universe? They say the Earth is like any other planet and revolves around the sun. Mindless nonsense. Yes, and why couldn't it be as they say? <laughs> we would feel it, my friend, naturally. Obviously, the Earth doesn't move. Well, what makes the other planets revolve? Divine will, what else? Angels, cherubims? Ever seen them? Oh, you try my patience, Galileo. Since when do you have to see a thing to believe it? Mark Antonio, we're going to create a device that will make distant objects appear much closer. How will we do it? With lenses, as with eyeglasses. You'll see, so to speak. That's fine. Now, I want you to put all that into a long tube. Whoa. <laughs> Found something interesting, Antonio? Oh, no, no, not really. I mean, uh, I was just testing it. An excellent view. Well, um, 
I guess we did a good job. It works. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now we can observe the, the stars and anything we want up close. <laughs> Good work, Mark Antonio. I'm going out. Something I have to take care of. Wow! Just a minute, Senorita. Hey, wait up! Hey, hey, hey! I'm coming, Senorita. Hey! May I help you, signorina? Grazie. <clears throat> Grazie, signore. interesting. And you want to know everything about celestial mechanics? But my friend, it's a divine plan, the movement of the heavenly bodies beyond our comprehension. It's a mechanism, like any other. It obeys laws, and those laws of physics we can understand. Now, what certainty you come with me? Now I want to show you something. There is the divine mechanism. It was made by a great craftsman, Santucci, according to the theories of Ptolemy. Looks very complicated. It would be simpler if all these planets, including the Earth, revolved around the sun. Oh, oh, oh. Sh -sh 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 hold your tongue. It's a sacrilege what you're saying. Oh, but, but the Bible says Joshua stopped the sun. And if he did, it proves that the sun revolves around the Earth. Don't forget, my young friend. Only 10 years ago, Giordano Bruno said the Earth revolved around the Sun and he was taken before the Court of the Inquisition, condemned of heresy and burnt at the stake. Eh, my good friend Cardinal Bellarmine, a good man, he was the Grand Inquisitor, in fact. There is one man eh, from Poland, Copernicus, yes, it said. He said the Earth revolves around the Sun. If it's true, I will prove it. Good news, sir. The Doge of Venice has invited you to demonstrate your telescope. You realize the Doge himself? Very well, we'll go. Can you see that ship just coming over the horizon? Mm. Now, would you be so good as to look through this? Oh, marvelous invention. We shall know in advance when our merchant ships arrive. Or if an enemy is bearing down on us. This invention simply makes distant objects look larger. Look at the moon. Don't look, my lord. It's all a trick. Who knows what harm it'll cause? In fact, the moon is a spherical body. At times, we see it in a crescent form. Because a part of its surface is in shadow, depending on its position to the sun. Nonsense and dangerous. It's a remarkable invention, Professor Galileo, and should be rewarded. You are appointed for life as professor in the University of Padua with a salary of a thousand florins per month. Galileo, can't you spare a few moments for your daughter? Look at her, she's so pretty. Oh, Marina, time is short and there's so much to discover. Jupiter, clear as day with its two little moons, 
If only others could see this. Saturn has satellites around it. Today we know that Saturn is surrounded by rings. But Galileo, with his primitive telescope, he wouldn't have known that. What are you doing? Making a dark glass. Otherwise the sun's rays can blind us. Marina, look, these sunspots, they're not where they were a few days ago. It proves we are moving around the sun. Copernicus was right. What we teach in the university is all wrong. Be careful, Galileo. What you're saying goes against the teachings of the church. No, Marina. No, I'm a good Christian. Nobody doubts that. But what's true is true. I have to tell the people, publish the results of my observations. So, according to my observations, the sun does not move around the earth. It's the contrary. The Earth revolves around the Sun. It's a planet like Venus and Saturn, and they all go around the Sun. All planets are dark, and they shine only when they reflect light from the Sun. And that explains why here on the Earth, we have days and nights. It is day where the Earth is exposed to the Sun. In that case, Professor, is what the Bible says wrong? The Bible uses simple language to be understood by all people. Science, however, has to use precise terms and complex reasoning to advance human knowledge. I assure you, my theory in no way contradicts the Holy Scripture. Monsignor! Monsignor Bellman! You conducted the trial of that heretic Giordano Bruno. Well, it's my duty to tell. I just heard Galileo talking that the Earth revolves around the sun. That's a dangerous doctrine. I know Galileo. He's a good Christian, Brother Lorini. I wouldn't worry about all his astronomical theories. Huh? They're not against the church. Is the heir of the devil, sowing seeds of heresy. And those like Galileo and his followers who shake the foundations of heaven, they are all of them sinners, my brother. They commit a mortal sin. And the moon revolves around the earth. Why? Galileo, we have three children now. You know, sometimes I wonder if you even know it. I know, my love. But there is still so much to learn. Yes, a heretic. I accuse him. Try him, this mathematician, in the court of our Holy Inquisition. But Galileo now had very powerful friends. And in spite of attacks and criticism, he's idolized, admired. No, uh, these would be the best years of his life. And the greatest men were eager for his friendship. Fernando de' Medici, the Grand Duke of Tuscany. Prince Cesi, the founder of the Academy of the Lynx. Francesco Barberini, a very powerful cardinal. 1624, he pays a visit to Mafio Barberini in Rome, who has just been made Pope Urban VIII. Galileo is given a warm, friendly reception, with considerable pomp. get on with his work. He's discovering the wonders of the sky. Someday the whole world will acknowledge how great he is and honor him. You'll be proud to be his children. Galileo is a heretic, a heretic, Holy Father. Everything he writes proves it. A thousand times over, he deserves the stake. Yes, the stake. Burn him at the stake. This work, the dialogue of the world systems, it appears so to disturb the good Father Caccini. Yes, it is dedicated to me, but I see nothing in it to harm the church. However, defending him isn't worth my dukedom. 
I believe that you, Holy Father, gave Galileo authorization to write and publish this book. Yes, that's true. I find it difficult to believe there is any wickedness in Galileo. And yet, I wonder. Who could he have been referring to in the stupid character Simplicio? Your Holiness, certainly Cardinal Bellamin, may our Lord watch over him and be near him, forbade Galileo from propagating the theories of Copernicus, yet Galileo did it. In writing here, we have the document. A forgery? No, that's not a forgery. The worthy head of the Society of Jesus, Cardinal Gaspar Borgia, ambassador of the King of Spain, requests an audience with your holiness. You disappoint us, Holy Father. You have not heeded the advice of the Society of Jesus, whose only aim is to protect you and the faith and the true religion of our Lord. You have shown great tolerance concerning the renegade Protestants in France, Bavaria, and Sweden. This is contrary to the interests of the noble realm of Spain, which I represent, as well as the venerable church. I must warn you, Holy Father, our country is powerful and our patience limited. Now about this heretic Galileo, whom you protect. Your diatribe, esteemed Cardinal Borgia, comes too late as it happens. Yes, I agree. This Galileo has overstepped the bounds, the limits we have accorded him. Quite so, Grand Duke, I have definitely decided we shall bring Galileo Galilei before the Holy Inquisition. Quite a comfortable prison. As introduction, Vincio di Firenzuola. I am to be inquisitor at your trial. What a strange idea denying the transcendence of the Holy Spirit which moves the planets to the sky and replace it with mathematical laws. I'd leave that to Copernicus. I only speak of Copernicus's theories as a notion, a hypothesis, and isn't it time we start to question the theories of Ptolemy, which are a thousand years old? Shouldn't humanity progress? Perhaps, my son, but always in respect of faith and holy scriptures. Our flock of the faithful are mostly simple people. Let them have rightful places, the sky, the sun, the earth. I am a scientist, father, and I am just revealing my views, my experiments. Where is proof of what you say? Galileo, Galilei, you say the earth revolves on its axis every 24 hours. Wouldn't we feel it if that were true? You say that only the seas are influenced by this astounding speed. But our buildings would fall. Life on Earth would be impossible. This acceleration is constant, progressive. When we travel in a coach a thousand times slower, we sense any acceleration or sudden breaking. This other nothing. Come, stop this game. Eagerness to convince leads you astray. For years I've observed, meditated, experimented, and you contradict me simply on the basis of your belief? Your arrogance is limitless, Galileo. You want to order heaven at your whim. Condemn your works, or it is you we shall condemn. You're lucky to have friends who protect you from torture and the stake. Renounce, Galileo, and you will be spared torture. Otherwise... Yes, I will renounce. God has ordered me no longer to believe the Earth circles the sun, and so I believe it no more. I renounce. And still, still, it moves. Only in the 20th century did the church at last decide to reinstate Galileo Galilei. <laughs>